Therefore, it is time for members' statements. The member from Huron, Bruce. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased to rise in the House today to give uh, to thank the number of people who have consistently come forward sharing their concern over the rising cost of electricity. And uh, as you know, I've spoken in the House. The, the number of petitions I've received is well over 7,000 now. And I want to thank everyone that responded to the invitation to, to participate and continue to exercise their voice during the committee meeting this past Monday. There was one lady in particular, Isabel, that could not make it to Toronto because of work, but I want to share her comments as well. Ms. Wynne is making a complete mess for a lot of people's lives, both now and especially the future. I received a notice from Hydro One telling me that I am very good with my hydro consumption. I am down 30 per cent from last year and that I use less than others around my neighbourhood. But do you know why this has happened? I can't afford it. I sit in the dark or with a candle burning. I have electric heat, but I can't turn it on. I can't afford it. I burn wood. I leave my house to work for 10 to 14 hours a day and pray the house is slightly warm by the time I get home. What the heck, anyways, is this company doing with the money we give them? Sending paper gold stars in the mail? Ladies and gentlemen, electricity is a serious issue in Ontario. I hope the deputations were seriously considered, and I thank everyone from the area of Huron-Bruce that participated. Larry Morrison, Keith Wetlofer, Norma Schmidt, Marilyn Gauvier, Marguerite Thomas, the Canadian Federation of Independent Business, Seamless Auto Care, specifically Sean Greenberg, Don McCabe from OFA, Doug Steele, and Linda thank Smith. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. For the member statements. The member from Parkdale, High Park. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On Monday, September 26th of this year, Joe Fiorito wrote his last column for the Toronto Star. Uh, Joe is a constituent of mine, but more importantly, he's a true Torontonian. You know, he didn't write about celebrities or even politicians. People that Joe wrote about were people like Al Gosling, the octogenarian who was evicted from his bachelor apartment. He wrote about the artist J Janice Buda, who died in his apartment and wasn't discovered until six months later. He wrote about women who were bitten by bed bugs. He wrote about new refugees. He wrote about uh, Zlatna Struni, the Rolling Stones of Belgium. Area. He wrote about people that people never write about and very rarely even speak to. The very last line of Joe's column was, see you on the corner. Well, Joe, I hope I see you on the corner, and I think I speak for everyone in this House when we say thank you for your years of service. Thank you for being the voice for the voiceless in Toronto. Thank you. Member students, the member from Northumberland, Quinty West. Well, thank you, Speaker. Mr. Speaker, over the past few weeks, I had the opportunity to visit all corners of my, of my extensive riding in Northumberland, Quinty West. I've enjoyed the beautiful autumn weather while visiting many fall fairs and community festivals. From the truck and tractor pole at one of, the, of 185th Port Hope Fair to the historic carousel at one of the 147 Rosemead Fair. My favorite part is seeing all the, ex all the exhibit and school displays, Speaker. Although the annual Harvest Festival and Farmers Markets in downtown Coburg did see rain, it didn't, hem it didn't dampen the spirit of hundreds of people checking out the bounty of fresh local seasonal produce, honey, preserves available from local vendors, Speaker. Cultivate Festival in Port Hope, a, re a recipient of a Celebrate Ontario grant, never seized the opportunity to welcome and impress thousands of visitors as they incorporate a weekend of amazing Canadian music talent and showcase local food and a number of local craft breweries, wineries and cideries. And in the peak of the apple season, re residents and tourists celebrate Apple Fest in my hometown of Brighton, Speaker, a full downtown street festival that honors all things, you guessed it, apples. Mr. Speaker, these and so many other events in the writing are the core of small town and rural Ontario tourism industry. They draw thousands of visitors from all across our wonderful province. I invite all members to travel down 401 to the Thumbling Queen West to check out all we have to offer. Thank you, Speaker. Queen of Order, the member from Bruce Gary South. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to uh, seek unanimous consent, if I could, Mr. Speaker, to have Paige Paul Grine accompany beside me when I read a very special statement. 
the uh, member from Briscoe Road Sound is seeking unanimous, con uh, unanimous consent to have a page stand beside him while he does his statement. <laughs> you, stole, you stole my thunder. I was going to say only if the page wants that, but uh, consent is being requested. Do we have it? Agreed. One moment, please. I'm uh, going to seek consultation. I just need you to confirm. I, I was. I might have been on the verge of saying it too, but I know that I'm going to rely on the member that our pages are never put in a position to be uh, uh, compromised in terms of partisan or party or politics. If I'm if I'm okay with that, I think everyone would be all right. Uh, do we agree? So if our page would take a position, then I believe the member will have his opportunity to give his. Uh, his discussion. We're listening. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to recognize a very fine and bright young man from Bruce Gray Owen Sound as he winds up his four-week tenure at Queen's Park as a legislative page. The page position is one of considerable honor and importance, and Paul Grind has served the members of this House with utmost respect and maturity that is truly beyond his age. Clearly, Paul, who is just in grade seven at St. Peter and Paul School in Durham, is motivated by a desire to serve, much like his political hero, John Diefenbaker, the 13th Prime Minister of Canada, who was also born in southern Gray County. Last year, Paul honoured his hero by making a short video in front of Diefenbaker's birthplace at 144 Barber Street in the village of Neustadt in the county of Gray, a project that got him shortlisted for a national history contest. Among the 150 student competitors for the 2015 Young Citizens Award, two were from Gray County, Paul Grine and Robbie Han of Chatsworth. Paul's video went viral. With the help of local MP Larry Miller, the video made it all the way to the Prime Minister's office and, as a result, earned young Paul an opportunity to meet Stephen Harper. But the big win for Paul was yet to come. His video project also led the federal Conservative government to propose a plan to purchase Diefenbaker's old home and establish it as a national historic site. I guess the question in everybody's mind now is, will Paul one day run to become Prime Minister? <laughs> Only Paul knows, and he has offered us this clue, and I quote, Learning from history, I see that living in Gray County, having a rural background and determination can lead to great things. Time will tell if I can realize my dream of being a part of Canada's political history. End of quote. I say he is already there, Mr. Speaker. Paul is a talented young man who may very well one day stand in the Ontario Legislature or the House of Commons as Prime Minister. If you decide to go to the provincial route, Paul, I hope you allow me a few more years of the privilege of serving the wonderful people of Bruce Gray Own Sound. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We'd rather have you, Paul. <laughs> A little, little edgy, but okay. <laughs> the member statement is the member from Nickel Belt. Thank you, Speaker. Here I have a letter from Diane Sekar, a very concerned citizen from Gugama, and it reads as follows. Minister, I'm sure by now you are well aware of the struggle we have endured for over 18 months. We are pleading with you to please order CN to clean up the awful mess they've made here. I know we are a small dot on the map, but you need to understand, Minister, we have family. I have grandchildren, my parents who are in their 80s, sisters, brothers, friends. We all see dead fish floating in our lake. Every day we see oil on our lake. At the Mikami site, the smell is horrible. It smells like oil one day and the, dead, the next day like dead fish. CN has gone to the media and told them that it is all cleaned up, that we, the town people, don't understand the science or how to read the result and so on. Well, they're right. I'm not a scientist, but I know what I see with my own eyes, and I know what our Gogama looked like and felt like before they ruined it. I am worried about the long-term effect this will have on generations to come. So again, Minister, I beg you to please have CN clean their mess. CN says that they have met all of the Ministry of the Environment requirements, so I'm not sure who I'm angry with, but in my heart, I cannot for one second believe that our government would allow this mess to go on. Diane, out of desperation, will join the people of Gogama and Metagami First Nations for a protest on Highway 144 on Monday. All are welcome to join. Water is life, Speaker. Further member statements, the member from Brampton Springdale. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the Kidney Foundation of Canada plans an annual walk amongst other fundraising activities throughout the year to create visibility in the community about its mission. The Kidney Walk took place in several communities across Ontario on September 25th, including in my riding of Brampton Springdale at Loafers Lake. I had the opportunity to attend and to meet with participants along with Regional Councillor Michael Pileschi. 
In Brampton alone, we had an excess of 120 people who actively participated and raised funds and walked the 5K. It was especially an important walk for individuals that had been affected by the disease and were able to share their lived experiences. While in Brampton, the event is still at its infant stage, the, ob the objective is to create a fun event with activities to encourage participation, raise funds, while del delivering awareness about the disease. There is also a jelly bean count, balloons for children, raffles, and guessing the number of kidneys along the path, a barbecue, a local artist, and music. The Brampton chapter aspires to further enhance the day for families by having a host of other activities. The chair of the Brampton chapter, Pauline Young, had done a phenomenal job with her team, Carmen, Wilson, Trixie, Joanne, George, Sonia, Angie, Amonfreet, and Pauline. They are all recognized for all of their hard work to organize an accessible, a successful event for a great cause. The day, the day of the event, the chapter estimated raising an estimate of twenty-seven dollars to $30,000 in donations, but they continue to add up. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements. The member from Renfrew, Gipsing, Pembroke. Thank you, Speaker. Since 1945, when Zeep research reactors sustained the first controlled nuclear reaction outside the United States, the nuclear industry has played a vital role in our lives. Today, I welcome representatives from the Canadian Nuclear Association to Queen's Park. In Chalk River, in my riding of Renfrew, Nipissing, Pembroke, Canadian nuclear laboratories have an outstanding and amazing record of research and discovery that has impacted all of our lives in a most positive fashion. The National Research Universal Reactor, NRU, which started up the year I was born, is still noted for its versatility and its high neutron flux. Here in Ontario, nuclear power consistently provides almost 60 per cent of all the electricity produced powering industries, businesses and homes with zero greenhouse gas emissions. The nuclear industry generates almost $7 billion annually and provides 60,000 highly skilled, high-paying jobs, with the majority being right here in Ontario. With the refurbishments at Bruce Power in Darlington, we can count on that for a long time to come. The planned refurbishments will have a $25 billion direct impact over the next 15 years and will ensure that some of the brightest minds will continue to be a vital part of our intellectual property. I've had the opportunity to visit and tour both Darlington and Bruce and look forward to the completion of these projects. Ontario's economic future depends on an abundant supply of safe, reliable, clean power. Our nuclear plants deliver that in spades. I want to thank the Canadian Nuclear Association for its tremendous contribution and commend them for being continually focused on making our lives better. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statement? The member from Kitchener Waterloo. Thank you. Speaker, today I would like to bring to the Assembly's attention an issue in Waterloo Region that is becoming an ugly annual tradition. Students arriving at Waterloo's universities in the fall being told they don't have a home even though they have paid for one. Students are scattered across the region in hotel rooms as they paid for apartments are not finished. Students are left with few options when they discover their paid for units aren't ready in the fall. Pursuing post secondary education is already an expensive investment. Faced with homelessness and insecure housing, students are much less likely to achieve academic success. Students tell me that they feel like they are being taken advantage of. Developers appear to be exploiting Ontario's housing system, leaving students in insecure housing situations. What can students do? If dealing directly with a delinquent developer fails, students can contact the provincial landlord and tenant board. Unfortunately, that, the way that that system currently works, developers can delay hearings, often rescheduling them for months later in another semester when students are not residing in Waterloo Region. Class action claims have been easily broken up by developers into individual cases, further delaying the process. Even when the LTB decides in favour of students, students must pursue the developer themselves to ensure the ruling is enforced. That can mean hiring lawyers and using the courts, costly and time-consuming options that students do not have the means to do. Students in this province deserve better. They need the protections that, are, that they are entitled to, and I'm calling on this government to find the solution. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. The member status, the member from Barry. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This evening, I will have the honour of hosting the Canadian Cancer Survivor Network reception here at Queen's Park for the third time. As a survivor myself, I would have appreciated having access to this wonderful resource when I was going through cancer. 
The CCSN works to promote health by conducting educational activities for cancer patients, caregivers and survivors on the physical and financial impacts and other relevant topics associated with managing cancer. They promote health by providing individuals living with cancer and their caregivers with access to related counselling, information or support group programs. CCSN helps the families uh, that they Sorry. CCSN helps the families that they connect to engage in discussion about evidence-based best practices to alleviate the medical, emotional, and social costs of cancer and encourage research on ways to overcome barriers to optimal care and follow-up for survivors in Canada. At CCSN, a network of patients, survivors, friends, families, community partners, and sponsors work together taking action to promote the very best quality of life for those experiencing the same terrible disease they once faced. Please join me in congratulating the Canadian Cancer Survivor Network for all the great work that they do, and I invite all of you to come by their reception this evening in room 228. Thank you. Point of order, the Minister of Education. Mr. Speaker, um, if you would just allow me to introduce some guests here from the College of Early Childhood Educators, Beth Beasley, the Registrar and CEO, uh, Sabathia Abel, Director of Registration and Member Services, Sita Welji, Direct, Duty, Deputy Registrar, and Ashley Bergworth, who is the External Relations. Please welcome them. Thank welcome. You. Thank you for being here. Thank all the members for the statements. It's now time for members uh, for in reports by committees.